Leave out being God. Just forget being God for a moment. Let's hear Jesus, His humility. Matthew chapter 19, sir, verse 16 and 17. And behold, and behold, one came and said unto him, unto Jesus, Good master, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Jesus says unto him, Why callest thou me good? What are you calling me good for? Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. Only God is good. He is all good. He refuses that you should even call him good. How would he ask you to call me God? This quality of goodness, this quality of goodness, I might say, good pastor. And in humility, the pastor said, no, I'm not such a good man. I have a lot of shortcomings. You say, Mr. D, that, you are a very good man. I says, no, 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 please, you know, leave that out. You know, I have a lot of shortcomings. We, in humility, we do that. But if Jesus was God, this is hypocrisy. God is good. And if he's God, he must say, well, I accept what you are telling me. But as a man, he has a right to say, no, what are you calling me good for? You know, the real goodness is in God, and he is all good. So, therefore, we can see in his own words, he's disclaiming any type of divinity that he is God. He's disclaiming that. With regards to what the pastor said about Jesus saying, before Abraham was, I am. And I am is an expression that God used in the Old Testament when people were inquiring from Moses, Moses inquiring from God. He said, look, these people might want to know who sent you. So I says, God, they want to know what's his name, what shall I say? He says, tell them, Eheye Asher Eheye, that's Hebrew. Means I am whatever I am. Look, don't waste time, man. Don't what you worry. You want to know about my titles? I said, look, just take it, man. I'm did that. Are you a DD or are you a, um, a professor? I said, look, forget all that, man. Just take it. I am whatever I am. Listen to me. If it's worthwhile anything to you, take it. If you think it's not worthwhile, reject it. I am what I am. God says, Eheye, Asher, Eheye. Now, Jesus Christ, he's provoked by the Jews, and he's telling them that, look, you destroy this temple, and I will rebuild it in three days. And the Jews say, look, man, it took 30 years in the making. <laughs> and you're going to build it in three days? And the writer says that they didn't understand that he was talking about the temple of his body. He didn't go to explain. He didn't explain to them. He created the confusion in the minds of the Jews. If he was talking about himself, he should have said so. The people understood, misunderstood that he's talking about the temple of Jerusalem, and he left it at that. Then they say that, look, man, you are only so many years old, 30 years old, and you are, you know about Abraham and all that. So he said, look, before Abraham was, I am. If he meant that he himself was before Abraham, we would like to know how he was. Because we know, and you are telling us, sir, that Jesus Christ was born 1991 years ago. In the stable, to a Jewish girl, 1991 years ago. Before that, he was not here on this earth. Where was he? With the Father. In what form? Was he this man? 30-year-old young man who was with the God, and now God reduced him into a sperm and put it into his mother's womb, and she carries him for nine months and gives birth to him in a stable. Is that your idea of what Jesus was? He was with God, walking and talking, dining and relaxing with God. And now he reduces him and says, now look you, my son, you go in into Mary's womb and you stay there for nine months and be born like any other human child and make your mother impure for 40 days. Is that... Is that the idea? That he was with God? How was he? So I said, look, read the book of Jeremiah, sir. 
And God Almighty tells Jeremiah, said, I have known you before you were in your mother's womb. Before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I have made you a prophet to the world before you were in your mother's womb. I want to know how the man can be a prophet before he came into his mother's womb. He was with God. So I know you, I knew you before you were there in your mother's womb. I knew you then. In what form? So I said, you see, your understanding of the scriptures is deficient. You are looking at a Jewish book, which the Bible is, full of Eastern metaphors and similes, to which you have no experience, you have no background to that. You are looking at things metaphorically, literally, and we are creating mischief. The arguments between us is because you are looking at a Jewish book, instead of looking at it as a Jew, you are looking at a Jewish book through Greek glasses, as the Greek saw it. Because the Greeks and the Romans were the pioneers of that message of Jesus Christ to your forefathers, the Scandinavians and the Romans and the French and the British and all. Who they made you to see a Jewish book through Greek glasses as the Greeks saw it. That's why the conflict. But if you look at a Jewish book as a Jew, no problem. So we understand now that Jesus was with God, and Jeremiah was with God, and now I tell you, Muhammad was with God, and I tell you, Hitler was with God, and every Tom, Dick, and Harry was with God. We were all with God, the good and the bad. We were all with God, in what form? No form, because God is formless, he's a spirit. How can you be informed? No, in the knowledge of God. Hitler was there. Your quizzling in Norway was there. You know, every Tom, Dick, and Harry was there. Pastor Stanley was there. Ahmad Didat was there. We are all there. <laughs>